Hi, I'm Jesse with Redash. This is an introduction to query parameters. First, let me show you an example of parameters in action. I made this demo that shows signups for a fictitious web services company. It shows time on the x axis and number of signups on the y axis. Above the chart is a parameter widget called effective date. Right now, the chart covers the last 60 days. Let's use the parameter widget to show all of last year and click apply. And just like that, the query re-executes. And here's the data from January through December. Or we can show this year, or a custom time range. Time filters like this are common with Redash. Moving on, there are 10 parameter widget types in Redash. You can see seven of them here. We have text widgets, number widgets, drop-down list widgets, query-based drop-down list widgets, date widgets, date and time widgets, and date range widgets. Not shown here, there are also date and time range widgets with optional seconds resolution. Just like the first demo, I can change my selections in each widget, then click Apply, or press Command-Enter on Mac, or Control-Enter on Windows, and the query executes, and the visualization updates. I'll click Edit Source so you can see how I did it. Each place you see double curly braces is called a parameter marker. The first one is called text, then number, then dropdown. Whenever you type double curly braces in Redash, the editor treats it as a parameter marker and will generate a widget beneath the editor. Whatever you type between the curly braces becomes the parameter name. I'll add a new line to the query, then add a parameter marker called foo. See a new text parameter widget appeared down below. It disappears if I delete the marker. When I first add a parameter marker to my query, Redash gives it a text widget by default. I can change the widget type by clicking this gear icon, which only appears on the edit source screen. From this settings screen, I can change the parameter title and type. There are 10 types in all shown here. Keep in mind, when your query executes, Redash substitutes each parameter marker with the literal value from its associated widget. The difference between the widget types is how inputs are validated. Number widgets only accept numbers, Drop-down list widgets use predefined sets, and date or time-based widgets can accept either quick date ranges like last 60 days, last year, or this year, or standard date notation. Text widgets are completely freeform, so they are not protected from either DDL or DML SQL injection. One point of interest, because all query parameters are sent as text to the database, a text widget can be used to hold dates, numbers, or even entire SQL statements. Here I can write an entire query into a text parameter widget. The database won't know the difference. Because of this, text parameters only work for logged in users with full access to a data source. They will not work in embedded visualizations or public dashboards. All other widget types are strongly validated and are allowed in embedded visualizations and public dashboards. Moving on, let's talk about setting up the validated parameter types numbers, dropdowns, and dates. I'll start with dates. You may have noticed that there are seven widgets beneath this query, but there are eight parameter markers, one on each line of the query. That's because of the date range parameter. It has a dot start marker and a dot end marker, because you'll need both when writing a SQL query. Instead of typing in markers by hand, you can use this double curly brace button beneath the query editor to insert your parameter marker and set its widget type in one easier step. Doing this for a date range widget will automatically insert both markers into your query. Redash sends date parameters as ISO 8601 formatted strings to your database. In most cases, you'll need to wrap the markers in single or double quotes for this to work. Next, for dropdown parameters. There are two kinds, frozen lists and query based lists. Frozen lists let you enter which options are available from the query screen, and only a user with edit permission on the query will be able to change this frozen set. Each option in the set goes on a new line. You can also toggle multi-select. Just click Allow Multiple Values and decide whether your values should be wrapped in single or double quotes when serialized into the query. You'll often need single quotes for SQL databases and double quotes for document-style databases. Query-based drop-down lists are similar to drop-down lists, but instead of entering available options by hand, Redash can populate the drop-down with results from another query. I wrote an example backing query for this video. What if the backing query returns multiple columns? It's pretty simple. 
If the backing query returns one column, the values from that column will populate the widget, and whichever value you select will be substituted in place of its parameter marker upon execution. If the backing query returns two columns, the values in the first column will populate the widget, but the value from the second column will be sent to the database. This is useful when you want to show relevant business information in the widget, but need to pass foreign keys back into the database. For example, a company might have an ID of 101 in the database, but a name of Acme. If the backing query returns Acme in the first column and 101 in the second column, then Acme will appear in the widget and 101 will be sent to the database. Only the first and second columns of a backing query are used. All other columns are ignored. Number parameters are the easiest to configure. Just set the parameter type to number and Redash will only allow numeric values. To set a default parameter value, make sure you are in edit source mode on the query screen. Change the parameter value and then save the query. The selected parameter value becomes its default. Finally, let's talk about dashboards, since that's where most queries end up. When you add a parameterized query to a dashboard, you'll see this screen. It lets you decide which widget on the dashboard will control which parameters in your query. There are four options. You can create a new dashboard widget. You can map to an existing dashboard widget. You can display the widget beside your visualization on the dashboard, or you can hide the widget entirely and set a static value. Here, I've added the same chart to my dashboard four times. The top two charts are powered by this dashboard level widget. The bottom two are independent. This one has a hidden widget, and this one has its own private widget. The parameter mapping settings can be accessed by clicking the vertical ellipsis button on any widget on the dashboard, and then selecting Edit Parameters. This has been an introduction to query parameters in Redash. Thank you so much for watching.